Every time you worry, something changes inside your brain. Not just how you feel in that moment, but the actual structure of your mind. That constant voice in your head telling you what could go wrong isn't just a bad habit. It's reshaping your brain, one worried thought at a time. But before you start worrying about your worrying, here's the incredible part. The same process that's been working against you can work for you. Your brain can change back. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how worry rewires your mind. And more importantly, how you can undo the damage starting right now. Let's start with something that might sound familiar. Your mind starts racing with thoughts about what could go wrong. What if I said the wrong thing yesterday? What if something bad happens? And here's the thing about worry. It feels productive. It feels like you're solving problems or preparing for the worst. But what's actually happening is far more serious than you think. Every single time you worry, you're training your brain. Think of it like this. Your brain has these pathways, like roads that thoughts travel on. And every time you worry, you're driving down the same road. At first it's just a dirt path, but the more you use it, the more it becomes a highway. Eventually, worry becomes the fastest route your brain knows how to take. Scientists call this neuroplasticity. It's your brain's ability to change and adapt based on what you do most often. The phrase that captures this perfectly is, neurons that fire together, wire together. So when you worry repeatedly about something, those worry circuits in your brain get stronger. They become the default. It's like your brain learns that worry is the most important thing to do, so it gets really, really good at it. But here's where it gets interesting. This isn't just about thoughts. When you worry, your brain actually thinks you're in danger. Even though you're sitting safely in your room, your mind treats that imagined future problem like it's happening right now. Your heart might race, your muscles might tense up, your breathing might get shallow, all because of something that hasn't even happened yet. So what's actually happening inside your brain when worry takes over? Let me paint you a picture that makes this crystal clear. Your brain has different regions that do different jobs. Think of it like a house with different rooms. There's the fear room, which is called the amygdala. This is like your brain's security guard. Its job is to scan for threats and sound the alarm when danger appears. Then, there's the thinking room, called the prefrontal cortex. This is like your brain's wise advisor. It helps you make good decisions, stay focused, and keep things in perspective. Now, in a healthy brain, these two rooms work together beautifully. The security guard notices something that might be a problem, and the wise advisor steps in to evaluate whether it's actually dangerous or not. But when you worry chronically, something strange happens. The security guard gets stronger and stronger. It's like it's been hitting the gym every day while the wise advisor has been sitting on the couch. The fear center becomes hyperactive and starts seeing threats everywhere. Meanwhile, the thinking center gets weaker. It's harder for it to step in and say, hey, wait a minute. Is this actually dangerous? Scientists have actually seen this in brain scans. People who worry a lot show increased activity in their fear centers and decreased activity in their reasoning centers. It's like the brain's balance has shifted, the fear room is now running the whole house, while the wise advisor barely gets heard. And here's what makes this even more challenging. When the fear center is in charge, it doesn't just react to real threats. It starts treating everything like a potential danger. A text message that takes too long to get a response becomes a sign that someone is mad at you. A slight change in your boss's tone becomes evidence that you're about to get fired. The brain loses its ability to tell the difference between real danger and everyday uncertainty. This is why chronic worry can feel so overwhelming. Your brain is wired to expect the worst, and the more you worry, the stronger these pathways become. It's like being stuck in a loop where worry creates more worry, which creates even more worry. But the changes don't stop at just stronger worry pathways. Chronic worry actually changes the physical structure of your brain. And this is where things get really fascinating. When you're constantly worried, your brain is flooded with stress chemicals like cortisol. Think of cortisol like a powerful cleaning solution. In small amounts, it's helpful, but when there's too much of it for too long, it starts to damage the very brain cells it was meant to protect. The areas that get hit the hardest are your memory center and your decision-making center. Scientists have found that chronic worry can actually cause these brain regions to shrink. Not just work less effectively, but actually get smaller. This explains why, when you're really stressed or worried, you might notice that your memory isn't as sharp. You forget where you put your keys. You can't remember what someone told you yesterday. You have trouble concentrating on simple tasks. It's not because you're not trying hard enough, it's because worry has weakened the brain circuits responsible for these functions. Meanwhile, the fear center is getting bigger and more reactive. It's like having a smoke detector that becomes so sensitive, it goes off every time you make toast. Your brain starts treating minor uncertainties like major emergencies. These changes, as serious as they sound, are not permanent. Your brain didn't forget how to be calm. It just got really practiced at being worried. 
And just like any skill, what you practice most is what you get best at. Now let's talk about why breaking free from worry can feel so impossible. It's because worry creates what scientists call a reinforcing cycle, and understanding this cycle is crucial to breaking free from it. Here's how it works. Let's say you're worried about a presentation you have to give. That worry feels uncomfortable, so you start thinking of ways to avoid the discomfort. Maybe you overprepare. Maybe you ask for reassurance from friends. Maybe you find a way to postpone the presentation entirely. When you do any of these things, the worry temporarily goes away. And your brain, which is always trying to keep you safe, notices this. It thinks, oh, worrying about this presentation helped. It made me prepare better, or get support, or avoid the scary situation entirely. Worrying works. So the next time you face uncertainty, your brain reaches for worry even faster. It's learned that worry is a useful tool, but your brain doesn't realize that the temporary relief you felt wasn't because worry solved the problem. It was because you took action or avoided the situation entirely. This creates a trap. Every time you worry and then feel relief, you're training your brain to worry more. You're making those worry pathways stronger and faster. It's like your brain becomes addicted to the pattern of worry, action, relief, even though the worry itself isn't actually helping you. Now, I know what I've shared so far might feel heavy. You might even be thinking, great, now I'm worried about how much I worry. But here's where the story takes a completely different turn. And this is the most important part of everything I'm going to tell you today. The exact same process that allowed worry to rewire your brain can be used to rewire it back. Remember neuroplasticity? The brain's ability to change based on what you practice most? Well, that works in both directions. Scientists have discovered that many of the brain changes caused by chronic worry are reversible. Not just manageable, but actually reversible. Your brain can grow back the areas that worry weakened. It can strengthen the pathways that promote calm thinking. It can restore the natural balance between your fear center and your reasoning center. Every time you choose a calming response instead of a worried one, you're building new neural pathways. Every time you breathe deeply instead of holding your breath in fear, you're strengthening your brain's relaxation circuits. Every time you practice being present instead of rehearsing future disasters, you're teaching your brain that it's safe to be calm. Let's talk about the first and most powerful tool you have for rewiring your brain. Your breath. Now I know breathing exercises might sound too simple to actually change your brain, but bear with me because the science here is absolutely fascinating. When you worry, your breathing naturally becomes shallow and quick. This sends a signal to your brain that confirms you're in danger. It's like your body is providing evidence that the worry is justified. But here's the incredible part. You can reverse this signal by changing how you breathe. When you take slow, deep breaths, you're directly communicating with your nervous system. You're telling your brain, actually, we're safe right now. This isn't just a feeling. Deep breathing activates the part of your nervous system responsible for rest and recovery. Within minutes of deep breathing, your heart rate slows down. Your blood pressure decreases. The stress chemicals in your system start to clear out. And most importantly, your fear center starts to calm down while your reasoning center becomes more active. Here's a simple technique you can try right now. Breathe in slowly for four counts. Hold that breath for seven counts. Then breathe out slowly for eight counts. Repeat this just three times and you'll notice a difference in how you feel. Your brain will start to shift from worry mode to calm mode. The key is consistency. Don't wait until you're having a full worry spiral to practice deep breathing. Use it throughout your day, especially during small moments of uncertainty. This trains your brain to default to calm instead of defaulting to worry. The second powerful tool for rewiring your brain is learning to be present. And I want to explain this in a way that makes it immediately practical. Worry always lives in the future. It's your mind trying to solve problems that haven't happened yet. Prepare for threats that may never come, or control outcomes that are ultimately beyond your control. But here's what worry can't survive complete presence in this moment. When you bring your full attention to right now, worry starts to lose its power. Not because you're fighting it or trying to stop it, but because you're not feeding it with your attention. You're redirecting that mental energy toward what's actually happening instead of what might happen. Scientists have studied people who practice mindfulness meditation, which is essentially training and being present. After just eight weeks of regular practice, brain scans showed that people's fear centers had shrunk while their reasoning centers had grown stronger but you don't need to meditate for hours to get these benefits. You can start rewiring your brain with just a few minutes a day of intentional presence. Here's how. Pick something in your immediate environment. Maybe it's the feeling of your feet on the floor. Maybe it's the sounds around you. Maybe it's the sensation of air moving in and out of your lungs. Focus all of your attention on that one thing for just 60 seconds. When your mind wanders to worries about the future, gently bring it back to your chosen focus point. Don't judge yourself for the wandering. That's completely normal. 
just notice it happen and return to the present moment. This simple practice is incredibly powerful because you're exercising your brain's ability to stay present instead of getting lost in worry. You're building what scientists call attentional control. The more you practice this, the easier it becomes to catch yourself when worry starts and redirect your mind back to now. Now let's talk about how to break the worry cycle I mentioned earlier. Remember, worry gets stronger when it's followed by relief. So how do you interrupt this pattern? The key is learning to sit with uncertainty without immediately trying to solve it or escape from it. This might sound scary at first, but it's actually incredibly liberating once you get the hang of it. Here's what I mean. The next time you notice yourself worrying about something, instead of immediately jumping into problem-solving mode, or seeking reassurance, try this. Acknowledge the worry without judgment. You might say to yourself, I notice I'm having worried thoughts about tomorrow. Then, instead of trying to figure out every possible thing that could go wrong and how you'd handle each scenario, simply breathe and remind yourself, I don't need to solve this right now. I can handle whatever comes up when it actually happens. This is revolutionary because you're teaching your brain that uncertainty is okay. You're showing it that you can feel worried without needing to act on that worry immediately. You're breaking the cycle of worry followed by relief that was making the worry str stronger. At first, this might feel uncomfortable. Your brain might protest and insist that you need to keep thinking about the problem. But if you can sit with that discomfort for just a few minutes, while breathing deeply, something amazing happens. The worry starts to fade on its own. As you practice these techniques consistently, something beautiful starts to happen. Your brain begins to remember what calm feels like. Those worry highways that seemed so permanent start to fade, while new pathways of peace and presence become stronger. You'll notice that uncertainties that used to send you spiraling now feel manageable. Your mind doesn't immediately jump to worst case scenarios. You become more curious about outcomes instead of terrified of them. Your memory improves. Your concentration gets sharper. You sleep better. You feel more like yourself again. Maybe more like yourself than you have in years. This isn't about becoming someone who never worries. It's about returning to a balanced state where worry serves its proper purpose. Alerting you to real issues that need attention, but not dominating your mental landscape with imaginary problems. The most profound change is that you start to trust yourself again. You realize that you can handle whatever life brings without needing to rehearse every possibility in advance. Your brain has been rewired by worry, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Every moment is a chance to choose calm over chaos, chaos presence over projection, trust over terror. Starting today, pick one technique we discussed. Maybe it's the deep breathing. Maybe it's practicing presence. Maybe it's sitting with uncertainty instead of immediately trying to solve it. Commit to practicing it every day for the next week. And here's my question for you. Drop a comment below and let me know. What's one worry that's been on repeat in your mind lately that you're ready to stop feeding with your attention? Sharing it might just be the first step in letting it go. Remember, your brain is always changing. The question is whether you're going to let worry shape it, or whether you're going to take control and shape it toward the calm, clear, confident mind you deserve.